My name is Maya, and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. Today, I'll talk about the difference between a real and a fake Hermes scarf. And specifically in this video, I'll focus on the 90 by 90 centimeter scarves. Let me first say that I am not at all affiliated with Hermes. I am simply a longtime fan and collector, starting with my first Hermes scarf received as a gift last century. Haha, <laughs> how about that? Uh, basically over three decades ago. Anyways, as I'm sure you know, the best way to ensure that you're getting an authentic Hermes scarf is pretty straightforward. Buy it at one of their boutiques or directly from their website. One tactic I've used over the years to grow my collection is by shopping duty-free when traveling internationally. But what if that's out of your budget? Or you missed a design or colorway from a past season? Thanks to the internet, it is absolutely possible to find virtually anything. Although I will say that chasing past season scarves can be even more expensive than if you'd bought it at the time it came out, but that's a whole other story. So let's talk about pre-owned, pre-loved scarves. There are reputable consignment stores out there, both brick and mortar and online. But unfortunately, there are also plenty of people who would happily sell you a fake scarf at a too good to be true price. So buying pre-owned, especially online, is very much a buyer beware situation and up to you to do your due diligence. Okay, so let's start with color palettes. Maybe there's a particular design and colorway you're looking for, or maybe you just find something online and it seems like a good deal. So your first thing is to make sure that Hermes actually made a scarf in that size and colorway. Sometimes you'll see some really questionable color palettes out there and they're almost painful to look at if you can recognize them for what they are. My best recommendation here is to do your research. There are a ton of people who love Hermes, blog about the scarves, collect the catalogs. And if you confirm that yes, there is a scarf design like this in the colorway and size you're considering, then that's one check mark. If you can't confirm it, drop it and move on. Let's talk a little bit about the fabric tags. Hermes care labels have changed over the years and the fact that a care tag is missing does not necessarily mean that it's a fake. Personally, I always remove the care tags because I don't like them showing. These are always sewn in the corner of a scarf and will read made in France, soie, 100% silk. Here are a few examples of ones that I've kept they used to be longer in past years. So my recommendation here is to do a little research online to familiarize yourself with the different kinds of care tags. Doing so will make it fairly obvious when you see a fake one. Print quality is another thing to check. To achieve the richness of color and depth, Hermes scarves typically use 25 to 30 engraved printing screens per design. In fact, one design from 2012, that was Antoine Sapoff's Indian Princess Waconi, that took a record 46 screens to produce. Again, you're looking for detailed photos of the actual scarf for sale. The design and colors should appear clear and crisp. Any fading, smudging, misalignment, and the like should be red flags for you. Another key thing to look for is rolled hems. Hermes scarves are hand-rolled by so-called roulettes, who hand-roll and sew the hems of each scarf. These are always rolled toward the more vibrant printed side of the scarf never under, and the sewing will be meticulously uniform. The tightness, roundness, and uniformity of the hem is a quality control checkpoint for Hermes. So if you ever see anything messy, uneven, or rolled in the wrong direction, 
these should be red flags for you. I will say that over time, hems may somewhat flatten. Here are two scarves from the late 1980s versus something I just bought last month. And you can see the difference in the plumpness. So if you're looking at something vintage, the hems will never be as plump as with a newer scarf, obviously. So if you're looking at online photos, whether eBay or consigner, make sure you see close-ups of the hems front and back. Let me talk a little about scarf title, artist signature, and copyright. Some guides will put emphasis on looking at these aspects, like the fact that vintage scarves may not have a title incorporated into the design. Certainly, that is true. Contemporary scarves, even the ones I have from the late 1980s, all have the title embedded in the design and usually the artist's signature somewhere. Or these other guides will recommend for you to look for copyright symbols with the Hermes, uh, making sure that that's an axon crab, etc. But the reality is that with today's digital printing technology, even the fakes are fairly photorealistic. So again, you really have to look at the details of the screen print, the hems, and other aspects that I talked about earlier. Let's look at packaging. Simply because a scarf is listed with packaging and or tags in packaging does not make it authentic. Look on eBay and you'll find any number of listings for boxes, bags, ribbons, and the like. The converse is also true. You can find a completely authentic scarf that has none of its original tags or packaging. While collectors often do keep the original bags, boxes, and ribbons, I know I do, mainly for decorative purposes, don't take something as authentic or not simply based on the presence of those items. A 90 by 90 centimeter scarf comes in a square box like this. It has acid-free paper, the printed warning about getting the scarf wet, and these distinctive pinstripes on the corners. I will add that these boxes have changed over the years as well. Here are a few older ones, whereas the newer ones use slightly less cardboard, and this is especially noticeable on the sides here. The last and most important thing I want to talk about is scarf weight. This will be a dead giveaway. Say you've done all your due diligence. You've checked that the scarf you're looking at exists in that size and colorway. You've looked at close-ups of the hems, the print quality, the care tag, if there is one, and the photos pass all your checks. Great! Now ask the seller what the scarf weighs. And this is assuming that you're dealing with an eBay seller or something like that. A 90 by 90 centimeter scarf will weigh at least 65 grams or 2.3 ounces. They are distinctly heavier than the counterfeits, which can't fake a quality silk twill. Here are a few examples. This one I bought this year. Here's one from the 2010s. And another one from the aughts. And here's my first Hermes scarf. You can see they all weigh at least 65 grams, sometimes more, but never less. So if you ask the seller about the weight and they fail to respond or give you some excuse as to why they can't provide that information, that is completely the wrong answer. Run, don't walk away. Because they know that if they tell you the weight, it will not meet this criteria. I will also add that if you have the opportunity to actually handle the scarf that you're considering, as you may in a brick and mortar consignment store, new silk has a distinctly crisp feel. If you haven't ever touched a, a new Hermes scarf, I would highly recommend that you go into the store just so you can get a sense of this, what it feels like. But it's very, very crisp. A uh, used scarf, on the other hand, because it's been folded and tied and worn over the years, it will feel 
definitely much softer uh, still silk of course but much softer than a new one so uh, that's just a another little tip there if somebody is passing something off as new it should be crisp uh, and anything else is going to feel much softer like it's been handled so there you have it my top tips on weeding out the counterfeits if you're shopping online for pre-loved Hermes scarves. I hope this has been helpful. Please like, share, and comment if you enjoyed this video. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf knot tutorials, reviews, and more, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!